Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for freedom. Amen. Thank the Lord for America and for the men and women who have served and who have given us the right and the privilege to be in his house today. You believe that? Yes. Stand this morning let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. It's a privilege that has been fought for and won. It is your house the same as it's your country. And I know you're handed upon it. And I just pray, Lord, that everything we do today will honor you and honor our veterans. I thank you along with this church again for the privilege to walk in here to sit on soft seats to be cooled off to be among friends to be able to sing and to preach the gospel with the freedom and the liberties that have been earned so we tell you we love you and we thank you and we look forward to what you're going to do this day. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say we love you. Amen and amen. amen.
We want to thank you. We want to thank you for the day that we're saved. In. We want to thank you for the freedom that you've applied to provide for us in this church and in our community and in our church. We want to thank you for the offer we're about to get this week. We thank you for it being used to bless your word through your life and your work in this community in your wonderful name. Amen.
Father, we thank you for the healing power of Jesus Christ. God, this is your service, just like it's your house. And we dare not get in the way nor try to stop the flow of the Spirit whenever it moves. So I thank you for all that you've done for each person who's had the faith to come forward. I thank you for healing this morning physically. I thank you for healing spiritually. And God, I pray that everyone will have the faith to believe my God is able. And not only that, my God has done it. And I stand this morning in the power of Jesus Christ. I am healed. I am delivered. I've been set free. And I thank my Lord and my God for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.
a few announcements for you this morning. I want to give a big shout out to everybody that helped with our fall festival trunk or treat this year, especially Debbie, you and uh, Michelle Stan. Well, Debbie's already standing, Michelle Stan. This was their first year taking this on, and they did a fabulous job. Of course, it wouldn't have been a success without the help of every one of you. So, thank you from the bottom of our heart, from everybody who decorated to set up to clean up to just working it, whatever you did, we say thank you. Um, second thing is the youth have started their second fundraiser. If you're a youth, stand up. <laughs> sit down, Tim. Most of our youth are up. Sit down, Daddy. Sit down, Daddy. <laughs> this is our youth. See one of them. They all have a catalog. We are doing RADA sales. Now, if you don't remember RADA, here, Vanna. This, I'm scared giving you a knife. Here. This is our RADA sale. We did this years and years and years and years ago back when we had a, um, a thriving women's club. And RADA is stainless steel knives. Um, pizza cutters, hamburger cutters, um, serving dishes, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. These things are indestructible. So if you can't cook, this is a great knife for you because you can't tear it up. <laughs> so I encourage you to get one. They have all kinds. We've got a catalog. Every one of the y'all can sit down. Every one of the youth have a catalog. So parents, please, please, please help us out with this fundraiser and make sure that your youth are selling because we really need to raise some money for our summer trip. And in the back today, Chris will be set up back here, and any of you youth that want to get ahead on your sales can come back here. Oh, Chris said, if you brought your book. Should I embarrass you and ask how many brought your books? I'm not going to. <laughs> but we have a book set up back here, so if you want to come back here and get a head start and go ahead and look through it. There's also in there this year is... Um, different sauces and recipe books that they, they sort of added to it so it's not just knives scrubbers, yeah stuff for men yeah there's a whole bunch of stuff so please help the youth out and see one of them um, because they're a little shy and unfortunately I can't get them to go to you so if you would like something please help them out and we'll be set up in the back last thing is our Thanksgiving baskets are due November the 20th um, you should have been given a sheet when you came in today on that sheet it has a list of all the things that need to go in the basket it's just suggestions you can add to it you can take away you don't have to put everything that's on there it's just a suggestion for you and then the last two pages, one is if you are willing to sponsor a basket, please fill that out and put it in the offering plate or bring it to me after church. And then the third one is if you know of a person who could be blessed this year with a Thanksgiving basket, please fill that information out. I need to know on there how many kids and how many adults so that we'll know how much food to send to that family. We did 27 baskets this year and I'm looking for 30 plus. We've increased every year. So if you know of somebody, please help us out and fill that out and get it back to us because we only have two weeks to get this done, okay? Those knives will make great Christmas presents for someone too. Think about that. You always- We'll be here in time for Christmas. All right. If we reach 30 or more with the baskets, Jimmy Johnson gets a pie in the face. <laughs> All right, this morning we are going to honor our veterans. We're fixing to, to play the salute to the veterans. And as your uh, branch of the service is called, I want you to come and stand by your flag and just remain standing there until the whole song is through, okay? Do that this morning. Got a flag right here. All right, now let's go. <clears throat> Thank you. 
that song speaks of heroes who more than self their country loved. From the days of our early American patriots through current conflicts, these are the men and women who have served our country in military service. We want to recognize those of you who have served or are serving in our armed forces, and so we invite you to stand when the theme song for your branch of service is sung. Please allow us to honor you today. stand and give a hand to all our servicemen. Men and women. The stand that we're going to do the pledge to the Christian flag and the American flag.
All right. We love each one of you and thank you for your commitment. You may go back to your seat. Will everybody remain standing while we do the pledge in just a moment? Let these go back to their seats. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all mankind in service and in love. Now I ask you to open your Bible to the book of Psalms, chapter 18, the 18th Psalm. Let me say it's good to have all of you here today. I appreciate you. If you're visiting with us, we certainly welcome you and thank you. And all the rest of you, it's just good to see everybody here. I want you to be blessed. This is a day that we honor our vets. And we tell them and show them that we love them for everything they have done for us. Nobody outside of each person that was standing here, nobody knows what any of them went through. Nobody. Because it's not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing. So we are certainly honor them and we certainly love them and thank them for everything they've done. Psalms 18, I want you to look at verse Probably be good if I had my glasses. Well, that would be good. Thank you. <laughs> I guess God's telling me I don't need them. That's good with me. All right, Psalms 18. Um, we're gonna we're gonna read one verse to begin with, verse 28. It says, "For thou shalt light my candle." The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. As we look at today, we are talking about Veterans Day. We're not talking about Cowards Day. We're not talking about Deserters Day. We're talking about Veterans Day. We're honoring those men and women that volunteered or were drafted, whichever the case may be, and they answered the call and they fulfilled their duty until the very end. And today, having done that, they stand here with honor before us and we salute them for their commitment and their love to their family, to this country, and to themselves. Today, we are in one sense of the word, we are at peace, but we are still fighting wars in our country, just a different kind than what we've ever fought before. And we will always be at war somehow, some way, with some group or some country or some nation. We must defend our country. We know that. We must. At all price, whatever the cost may be, we must defend our country. And these veterans that we honor today 
did that and will continue to do that. We have other veterans in, in our service or in this church that are not here today, and we salute them also. As I was thinking about today and what we've been through, I thought back on the wars that we fought in our country and some of the memorable things about some of them. And it was a dark picture that I just looked at. It's, it's, a, it's a sad picture. But yet, in the end, victory came forth, but at the cost of a lot of lives. The money wasn't important, but the lives were. We go back to the Civil War, and we think about that one battle, Bunker Hill, 1775. It sticks out in our minds that as we fought one another, then World War I, then World War II, and we think about Pearl Harbor, December the 7th, 1941, caught by surprise, almost broke our backs, but America decided that she would stand and fight. And we fought the Japanese, and we beat the Japanese we think about Normandy and the lives that were lost there trying somehow to secure victory by destroying the enemy of the nations at that moment. One of the greatest battles fought then was the Battle of the Bulge. I had an uncle that fought there and got shot there, defending his nation. It was a horrible battle, but yet it was one that had to be fought. Then the Korean War came along and Pork Chop Hill, another bloody place that in 1952, it took place with the cost of a lot of lives, but yet it was memorable, it was a turning point. And then along came Vietnam. Vietnam is a war that changed America. It changed America. We had men and women that went there and gave their life because they were told to go there. That was their duty, their obligation. And they went there to make a difference in the world. They went there to defend America. One of the greatest battles ever fought there was Hamburger Hill. I think it took, if I understand it right, it took 11 attempts for us to take that hill. Now, that may be not totally correct, but it's close. Eleven times we tried to take that hill. And it was one of the bloodiest battles of the Vietnam War. We finally took it, secured it, at the cost of 72 people of our soldiers dead, 372 wounded. That's what we gave for that hill, but it made a difference. Then came Iraq and Iran Afghanistan, we waged war in all those places, a different type of war, but we waged it. And then comes the Great War, the Twin Towers. Terrorism is undefined. There are no boundaries to it. It's not some place we can sail to and storm the beach. It's not a mountain we can climb or take. They're all around us. And we went to them. We didn't want the war. They brought it to us. And we defended our nation as best we could. But the Vietnam War, I said, changed America in that when it was fought, some of our supposedly great leaders at the time, Kennedy was one of them, McGovern was one of them, they blasted our military for what they did. They began to badmouth the military. These men and women that boldly gave their lives. And the next thing you know, their following began to talk against that battle, that war. And America turned the point that many of them, when they returned, there were groups of protesters that met them at the airport and spit on them. It turned America. It changed America. 
And when we got into the war of terrorism, we were even more changed because we can't define him. So we said, let's don't do it. But others said, we got to do it. So we began to wage war within our own country at right and wrong and what we should do. And as we changed administrations and we changed presidents, we had different ideas and different thoughts. And it has cost many lives. Today, as we stand here, we're a free nation. But yet a nation that is under the threat of attack every single day. From terrorism, from Russia, from Iraq and Iran, all these things are out there. And we're very unstable and we're trying to do what is right, but we don't know what is right because we can't predict the future. But I'll tell you, the memories that we have of these wars are horrible. They're horrible. Many paid a great price. Some of our friends and neighbors and family did not come back. Some that came back are scarred mentally, and they will be for life. The memories of them are wonderful. And they received their medals. And then I think about America rising up and dropping the bomb on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, letting them know that we weren't going to take it anymore and that war came to an end. Now, as I thought about these things, I thought about us and what we're doing. When my last year in college, I went and took my physicals for the military, and I failed them. I was willing to go. I would have been in the Air Force had I gone. But I failed the test. I couldn't go physically. Would I have gone? Yeah. Did I want to go? No. I don't think anybody wants to go. But I would have stood and I would have served my country. And I would have done it proudly. But I think back on that, and now I look at it. You know, we're in a different war today. And as I looked out here at these wonderful people that came forward, they were so proud when their music was playing. And they should be. Proud of the branch they served in, and they should be. But I thought about all of us who didn't come up here and stand. And there's a a whole lot more of us that didn't come up here than those that did. And as I, as I, 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 as I pondered that, I began to think about, well, what about us? It w- would, would it be neat if we could stand at one of these flags? I, I wonder how many of you would like to come up here and stand at just one of these flags and be bold and stand and say, yeah, I did, I did, I did, yep, and I'm proud of it, I did. Because you accomplished something. And your reward is those people saying thank you and they love you. But then God reminded me, you know, there's another war. We're fighting the greatest enemy we've ever faced in our lifetime or ever will face. And it's called the devil. And the catch is that every one of us must fight. Every one of us who calls himself a Christian must understand that this war that's going on, we must get involved. We are soldiers of the cross the moment that we receive salvation. We don't have a choice. It's not a volunteer army once you receive salvation. You've been drafted in. You've been called in. And God wants you to to be able to do the things that he needs to overcome this enemy that stands before us. As Christians, we are to stand. We are to defend Christianity. We are to do everything in our power to destroy the enemy. And we can. We have an objective in front of us. God's word clearly defines that objective. Is out there. 
And he says, I'm going to equip you and give you all you need. Now go forth and fight the enemy. We've got to engage him. In every battle we fought outside of the Civil War, we went to the enemy. They provoked us, and we went there, and we defeated them, and we were victorious. God is saying to me and you, it is time that the army of God rise up and begin to do what he's always wanted us to do, and that is to go to the enemy, the devil himself, and begin to fight to fight him and begin to do the things that God has equipped us to do against this enemy. It's, it's not something where maybe I will and maybe I won't. It is an everyday battle that every Christian is called to, and every one of us will be held accountable and will face God in eternity to see whether or not we were faithful soldiers to the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. To define that war is to define the good shepherd against the evil shepherd. God is the good shepherd, the devil is the evil shepherd. Both of them are trying to do the same thing. John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Have you ever paid attention to what that verse means? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. What does it mean? What is the devil trying to do? What, is, what have you got in your possession that the devil would steal from you? Your house, your car, your bank account. Think about it. He comes to kill. Do, do you think the devil wants to really kill you? And he came to destroy. What's he going to destroy? Your possessions? So what does that verse mean? He came to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the enemy that we're facing. And if we don't know the answer to that, then we're fighting a losing battle because we're not fighting. We, we have to have something out there that we know we're fighting for. This verse is it. And when he does it, he says to steal. He wants to steal your heart. He doesn't want your possessions. They're no good to him. But he wants to steal your heart. He wants to invade your heart. He wants to seize your heart. He wants to carry it away. He wants your heart. So he's come to steal it. But what's he want to kill? See, he has his army too. He can't be killing us off. See, that wouldn't work. He needs to increase the size of his army. So he's come to steal you away. And he came to kill, and what he wants to kill is your soul. He's after your soul. So he offers you a false salvation. He offers you a false religion. See, he can't, he can't give you God and kill your soul. But if he can get you to, to accept something that's false, that's contrary to the word of God... Then it will take your soul, make it weak, and he can then kill it. And to kill your soul is to have you as his possession. So now he's got you in his army fighting against God. And then he wants to destroy. What he wants to destroy is our hope. We have the hope of salvation. We have a hope of an eternal home in heaven. He wants to destroy that. He wants to confuse us. So if he can steal our heart, kill our soul, then he has destroyed our hope. We don't have any more. What can I do? Where can I go? I, it's no use. I've tried. I can't do anything anymore. I just give up. And that's what he wants you to do. Because he can possess you and turn you around from a soldier of the cross to a soldier from hell. And we've got to be more, more aware of that he does it through oppression. He oppresses God's people. He does it through abuse. He does it through persecution. What do you think his purpose of all the sickness on this earth is? What is the purpose of it? 
What is the purpose of death? What is the person of trial? Uh, what what is the purpose of trials and tribulations that Satan brings? What's the purpose of it? See, every one of us have been guilty of doubting God. Every one of us. You you're told by the doctor that you have a disease that's you know, incurable, and we faint. We start going nuts. We think, I, 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 get, I better get everything in order because this is, this is my, you know, we start thinking all the negative thoughts. You get unexpected bills in the mail and they're more than what you've got in the bank and you, 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 you go nuts all of a sudden. How am I going to do it? What am I going to do? How am I going to pay it? How, we, and we start asking all these crazy questions. See, we forget God. And when we do, do that, it's his purpose to do that so that he can... Kill, steal, and destroy. And where we ought to be strong in God, we become weak. We become weak. And the devil then can move in. And then you got good people, family members around you. And they begin to encourage you negatively. They begin to tell you how bad it is. And you better get your life in order. And we've had a good life. We thank you for everything you've done. But we know there's no hope. And we're going to... Yeah, you don't need that garbage. You need a man or a woman in your life that can look at you and say, my God is able to do all things and my God loves you and my God can and will deliver. We need that. But not only do we need it, we need to do that. We need to be strong. We need to encourage one another. If we're going to go out, let's go out fighting. Let's go out fighting. We can't fear death. If you fear death, you're a loser. You can't fear death. You can't fear these things the devil wants to bring against you. You want to be able to look at him and just simply say, what was that, a mosquito? You want to look at him and say, is that the best you got? Bring it on. Because within us is greater things than what's outside of us. We need to begin to act like it, church. We need to act like we believe those things. We are not losers. God's already promised us victory. He made the victory at Calvary. Now he's waiting for us to come forth with what we have that he's given us to make us strong. And why we don't want to do it is simply because we don't believe it anymore. It's a fairy tale. Well, I've been praying for so long it never has happened. That's like the atheist one time. He was a teacher in college and he was teaching his group, his class, and he began to tell them the, the things that was wrong with the Bible. He began to tell them that atheism was real. There was no God. And he, stopped. he said, now, if I'm teaching the wrong thing, God strike me down in five minutes. Nothing happened to him. He went on and talked. One theologian one time made the remark about that. He said, do you reckon that, they, that atheists thought that God's loving kindness only lasted five minutes. Now think about that. God's loving kindness is forever. We should not doubt God. He said to his disciples, I'll meet you on the other side. And the devil brought a storm. Why? To steal, kill, and destroy. And God just shook his head walked out on the water to him and said, Oh, ye of little faith. Peace! And the wind stopped. When God gets ready to speak peace, there's not a devil in hell that can stop it. And that's the same thing in your life. When God says peace, he means peace. When God says be healed, he means be healed. And his time is coming in our lives, and we need to act like we believe it and begin to proclaim it and look for it around every corner, around every bend, every morning, every night. Keep looking because it's on the way. Though it tarry, wait for it. For though it tarry, it will not be late one single day. And we ought to act like that. The weapons that God gives us are great weapons. They're not rifles and tanks and grenades and planes. They're the armor of God, and we should wear them proudly and what is that armor it is hope it is courage it is faith it's protection it's being focused it's trusting God that is our weapons that no matter what comes against us no weapon formed against us shall prosper none that's God's word 
So when he brings disease, when he brings trouble, when he brings these things, don't sit there and cry about it. Stand up and realize that no weapon formed against you will prosper. God said so. Don't you believe him? Yeah. I believe him. Does it hurt to get shot? No. But God will take care of it. Somebody is going to have to die. We can't all live forever. There are 276 men that went up Hamburger Hill and never came back. They never lived to see the end of the earthly battle. And there are a lot of us Christians going to lose our lives in this battle. And that's why every one of us, when we sign up to be a Christian, we said, God, thy will be done. Amen. That means if death comes, I will face it proudly. I will face it with a smile in my heart. I will face it trusting God. And God, if you need my life, you take it because the worst thing can happen to me is I'd wake up in heaven. <laughs> I'll wake up in heaven. Well, what about my family? That's God's business, not yours. Because they are God's family. They're not yours. They only belong to us. God will take care of us, and we've got to know that. He said he gives us a two-edged sword, which is his word. Whatever the word says, I believe. This is my weapon against the enemy. And God said, no weapon formed against me. I believe it. God said, I am your protector. I believe it. I believe everything that God said in there because it's the truth. What is the war that we're fighting and what is the battle plan? We're going to have scars. We're going to have to carry a cross. We're going to have to face death. But we've got to stay on the front lines. Every one of us have a cross to bear. Y'all want me to quit? <laughs> Whatever the devil brings against us shall not prosper. You see, we've all got to carry a cross. And you carry that cross until the day you die. Jesus carried his all the way to Calvary. Suffered persecution. We also will carry a cross. We can't faint. We can't get, give up. We can't quit. We can't badmouth. Carry your cross. Carry your cross. And no matter how heavy that cross is, remember this. God always has the other end of the cross. Amen. You never carried it alone. He's always there trying to help us. We, gotta, we can't surrender. We can't give up. We're not going to be defeated, and we can't fear. That's how we're going to be successful with God. We've got to fight for things in our Christian life, for justice, for righteousness. I want to be righteous and whole before God. I've got to fight for that because the enemy is trying to take it from me. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. I've got to fight for it. I am holy. Why? Because I serve a God who is holy. I am righteous. Why? Because he put his robes of righteousness on me. I can win. How do I know that? Because God said there are no losers in my army, and I will fight for you, and the victory is already mine. That's why we've got to trust that. We've got to believe that. And we've got to go there every day of our life. And as we march through, Christ, through this life of ours, we need to have this, this flag, not the flag of, of, of America, but the flag of Jesus Christ waving before us, that blood-stained flag that says, I can go anywhere, I can do anything, and I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and I will not quit, and I will not stop until I get to heaven one day and get my reward. Amen. 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 And God wants all of his spirit-filled soldiers marching forward. I could ask you this morning, how many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit? And I, most of you in here would probably tell me yes. Some of you don't know, but you'd probably tell me yes. Well, then you ought to be on the front line marching. Amen. There's no place in the back for spirit-filled Christians. They lead the way. They show others the way to victory through Jesus Christ. The purpose of the battles that we fight. He says that we must fight to weed out the quitters, the cowards, the strayers, and the half-hearted. You see, you can't go AWOL with God. 
And what that means is once you get in there, you're a soldier. If you want to quit, go ahead. If you want to give up, go ahead. See, all those options are yours. But the devil wants to bring things on you so that he can kill and steal. And God says, I need a strong army. And there are going to be tests and trials that God's going to allow us to have. And he said, I'm going to weed out those people that are quitters, that are cowards, those who want to run, those who are half-hearted. Because God says, I want an army that is willing to give their life for the cause. I want an army that's willing to give themselves wholly and without reserve to the kingdom of God. I want an army that's willing to stand in the face of death, in the face of trials and tribulations and turmoils. I want an army made of men and women that know their purpose, know their plan, and are happily marching towards victory in Jesus Christ. There's no place in here for these other people. There's no place in God's army for that. So he weeds them out. And God also exposes for us the traps that lie out there. He does. The darkness. So that we can attack unafraid of anything that might be in our way. We've got to go forth and proclaim Jesus Christ. He is my rock. He is my life. I want to read this to you and then read one more thing and we're going to close. In our book, we're reading on page 51. It says, God's word is always right, but it's not always pleasant. <laughs> there are times that it encourages and there are times that it discourages. Our lives are basically the same since we experience both good and bad. A child of God must learn how to live in victory every moment. And our prayer is, Father, you must be my source. I will not always be successful, for Satan is out to destroy. I must accept your word and truly fear and tremble as I prayerfully study it. I have been promised peace and rest in all of life's tribulations. If I trust in you, those who sow in tears will reap and enjoy and in triumph. Those who sow in tears, listen to that, will reap in joy and triumph. You are the Lord God Almighty. You rule and I will serve with gladness. All things, all kings shall fall down before God. All nations shall serve him. Do you believe that you're in that army this morning? Do you believe that you're a soldier of the cross? Well, you see, if you are, then you need to give everything to God without holding anything back. We want to be victorious veterans. Every one of God's children, we're veterans. If we were to hold up the, the flag here of, the, of God this morning and ask for all veterans of that flag to come and stand, and every person in this church should come forward. Not all of you can. I know that, but you should. Because you know it's true. We serve a God that will never, ever leave us. Never leave us. And one day, we're going to appear before him. And I want God to look at me. And I want him to say, son, you are a faithful soldier. I've got a medal for you. And it's a medal of honor. It is your entry into the kingdom of heaven. Come in and live forever. What a day. What a day. What we do today is whether or not it will determine whether or not we do that then. If you love God, you're going to give him everything. You're going to come to church every time the doors are open. You're going to read your Bible. You're going to pray. You're going to give. You're going to do everything you can because that is what stops the devil. If you grow lax and you slack, he's after you. He'll kill, steal, and destroy 
All he wants is your heart and soul. Our soul is the prize of the war we fight. And God or the devil is going to receive it. It's the prize. That's the prize in my life is my soul. And God or the devil one is going to receive it. I choose who I want to receive it. And you do too. I leave you this morning saying this. There is but one God. He is the Lord God Almighty. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and the ruler of the universe. There is but one salvation. And that was bought at Calvary. And it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way to heaven. There is but one hope. And that is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ on that day. That is our hope. Jesus loves us. He is our protector, our provider, our joy, our peace, our constant companion. He's our love, our wisdom, our strength, our salvation. He is our healer, our deliverer, our praise, our glory, our redemption, our present help. He is our rock, our fortress, our shield, our redeemer. He is our sword, our power, our praise. He is the king of kings. He is our father. He is our friend. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus Christ is our song. And we go under the banner that Jesus loves us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for the veterans of your army. I thank you for those, God, who have made a commitment to serve unto death and boldly do so, boldly attacking the enemy, boldly going against the world. Because, God, we stand in your strength, in your faith. We are nothing without you. We have no way to fight without you. You are our source. You are our strength. You are our weapons. And, God, the enemy that we fight, he's unseen, but yet his tactics are all around us. And, Lord, he has but one purpose in his life, and that is to kill, to steal, and to destroy every child of God. So, being you've told us that, now you said be prepared to fight the battle against him. And he said, you, you can do it. You can win. If you want to be a Christian, all you've got to do is choose me and then begin to love me, begin to serve me. Don't faint. Don't fall away. Don't turn away. Because when you do, the enemy is going to attack you and he's going to destroy you. Stay strong and I will lead you and I will keep you. So, Father, I thank you for that promise. And just help every one of us to be the man and the woman that we should be victorious veterans in this world today. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.